I mean, look at it, right? It's an abandoned building. It's a business that went out. And a lot of people, when they start this business, they probably thought this was an amazing idea. But what happened? What caused this business to shut down? There may have been a bunch of things or a bunch of factors, but what we're gonna be talking about in this video is how do you evaluate your own business as a good idea or not? Because when you start off in business, I know you're probably wondering, is this a good idea? Is this something I should pursue? What's the best ideas I should look for? Well, I'm gonna give you five things in this video. Yes, this video right here. They're gonna help you evaluate if you've got a good idea. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to take a pencil out, pen and paper, and get ready to evaluate if your business is a good idea. So let's get right into it. So the first thing we're going to be talking about is price potential. So what is the potential price that you can make off this? So now a lot of people, when they look at this stuff, they don't understand the idea of margins. So what do I mean by that? So let's say you've got a product that you could sell for $20, right? But it costs you $19 to make it. Is the price and potential really high enough to make something off that? Because you're going to be spending hours, literally hours trying to manufacture this product. And then you're only going to make a dollar off each product. You would literally have to sell a million of them, a million of them just to make a million dollars. And then all the effort and time you would spend, you would have spent $19 million producing it. This simple thing like this that people don't think about. What is the price and potential? Now, I'll tell you something. I'll give you a little hint. Nowadays, you have stuff like drop shipping. You have all these things like you can get stuff, source products from overseas like AliExpress. And these things will allow you to have heavy pricing potential. But the first thing you have to ask yourself is, does this have pricing potential? Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is urgency. How urgent is this thing to be solved? Now in business, there a lot of times what it comes down to is sometimes people don't need the product, right? So you could have some type of luxury product and they don't feel like they need the product. So let's say you have a product though that's very urgent, like people have to have it. You get all these businesses that have stuff like say, like baby products or something, people, stuff that people need. They can't wait, they have to get it right now. Well, that's the urgency. Is there a product or something out there that people feel like there's an urgent need for? This is the second way that you can evaluate your business. I want you to think about it like this, right? You take a product like even an iPhone. What they're effective at doing is figuring out how much urgency there is in order to create this product. Like they make people feel like you have to get the iPhone when it comes out the first day. This is a huge thing when it comes to business. So do you have something that people have an urgent need for? Is there something that if people saw it right now, they say, no, I have to buy this today because this is huge. And this is a powerful thing. I'll give you a small story about this. I remember a while back, a good friend of mine, he got locked out of his room and he had to call a locksmith. Right? Well, this is a good business because, well, the locksmith is something urgent. People are gonna always be locking their keys out and then they have to get it done right then. So they charge a, lot, a big price for it. Um, even though this may not be the most um, nice thing to do, it's just a thing to think about when you're evaluating your business. The next thing we're gonna talk about is market size. So let's say you have some type of luxury product, right? Let's say you had LED horse uh, saddles, right? LED horse saddles. That may sound like an amazing idea. You're like, man, I love riding horses and horse saddles and stuff like this. But there's one problem. There's not a lot of people who want to buy luxury LED horse saddles. Let's say there's only 100 people in America who want to buy luxury LED horse saddles, right? Your market size is just too small in order to create a viable business, and especially a long-term business. And this is a huge thing that I think you see a lot of people make a problem with when they, or have a problem when they first start a business. Yeah, they have a good idea, but it's not that many people who want to buy it. So they end up selling it to a small margin. Now, look in the, in the day of social media, right? They were talking about how a lot of these companies are literally selling, they're selling this private jet experience. So what they would do is they would charge people to come on a private jet and take pictures as if they were living that lifestyle. Now that is a huge market because so many people want to look great on social media nowadays. That was one of the ways they evaluated that business. They understood that, oh, there's a big market for this right now. So when you're looking out there in the world, ask yourself, what's the market size? What's the big upfront investment that you could look at and say, oh, okay, this is a bunch of people who want to do this. Next thing we're going to talk about is upfront investment. Now, 
The question here is, do you have, are you gonna make an upfront investment that is something that you can see a return on, right? A lot of people, when they start off a business, they're saying to themselves, oh, I don't know um, how much I have to invest in front. You might be wondering yourself watching this video, is this a good investment because um, how, how much you have to spend up front? But you have to ask yourself, what's the potential return on investment? You know what I'm saying? The potential return on investment. Okay, so when I first started business, I spent, I don't know, I had to save up, but I spent about $300 to get all my stuff incorporated, get all my taxes and stuff incorporated. And I spent about two, three, four hundred dollars $400 on equipment. And this was literally after doing a bunch of odd jobs to make money just to get everything for my business. But because of the nature of my business and I was selling information products, it wasn't a large upfront investment, but the potential return on investment was high. So you gotta ask yourself, I had the information, I had the knowledge, and I had the small upfront investment that led to me making a bunch of money in the long term. That was one of the factors I used to evaluate my business. Yeah, I knew I had to invest a couple thousand dollars up front, but I knew the return once I got all the information and invested in myself would be huge, huge upside. So that's how I evaluate my business. But let's say you're gonna put $10 million into a business, right? And I use an outrageous number just to make the point. But you know that the pricing potential is very small. Is it worth the investment? This is the type of things we have to think about when we're evaluating our business. And this is a powerful tool that I want to use. So the last thing I want to talk about, and I, I really, this one here is huge. This is huge. This is the scalability potential, potential or the freedom wealth equation. Really, really, this is huge, right? This is why I saved this one for last. Okay. So basically when we talk about evaluating the business, a lot of times what we miss is, do, does this business have the potential to provide freedom for us? So what do I mean by this? Okay, after I explain this, this is gonna really trip you out a little bit because this is something I missed for a long time. So one thing about creating a, gen, a large amount of wealth or generating a large amount of wealth is you have to have the potential for growth. I see a lot of businesses, they talk about, if you ever seen these multi-level marketing companies and stuff like this, or affiliate marketing programs, they talk about a lot of the wealthy people, they don't actually become part of those programs because they're limited in how much potential money they can make because something's over their head that stops and limits their money. I had friends, for example, in promotion. They would go promote for these clubs, but who do you think makes the real money? It's the person who has control of the actual venue, the actual club. So when we're evaluating the business, and even looking as at, is this a business at all? I need you to understand something. I remember I told you in the first bit, I'm not gonna give you a watered down answer. I'm gonna give you the hard, honest truth. If you want to understand if it's a good business, business idea, ask yourself this, is it scalable? Or is there something that's going to limit me? If I go work for, if I go work for another company, and I'm talking to you because you're an entrepreneur. If I go work for another company, well, I'm limited in anything I can do. Let's say I wanna do a crazy marketing plan, right? Well, I can't do that because I have to adhere to somebody else's guidelines. Let's say I want to push my advertising budget up a large degree. Well, if that person says, well, you can only do this type of advertising, well, I'm limited by that company. You get what I'm saying? Even if it's a multi-level marketing or affiliate marketing program. Now, look, I'm not saying that you can't make money doing these things. Or I'm not even saying anything bad about these things. When we're talking about scalability potential and getting a lot of money, we're gonna have to always look at, is there a potential for growth? And as long as you've got somebody else who's dictating how much money you can make or what you can do or what type of moves you make, then realize you're gonna always be limited by the potential of that business. And that's why we do stuff like how to start a business in 30 days. We're trying to give you your own platform so you are in complete control of everything that you do with inside your business. We're gonna be talking about everything in this course. And what I want you to do is go sign up for the email list right now for how to start a business in 30 days. Well, we will be talking about everything. I mean, we're talking about coming from the bottom. If you're coming from absolute zero, we're gonna have strategy on there for you. If you ever wondered how to get investors, if you've ever wondered how, what's the first step to getting started, if you've ever wondered how much money you might need to get started in business, if you worried about how to tell an amazing brand story, all these things, we're gonna be talking about this. And even we're gonna be going deeper into more ways to evaluate a business. I gave you five here, but we're gonna go even deeper and give you more ways to evaluate, is this a good idea, and jump out there. All inside how to start a business in 30 days. This is the definitive course that's gonna teach you the ins and outs of business, I promise you. Use this course, and you swear by it, and in the next 30 days, you will know more about business than pretty much everybody around you. And that is my promise to you. I told you, and I'll tell you again, I wanna help create 1 million seven figure businesses in the next 25 years, and I want you to be one of them. So go over to howtostartabusinessin30days.com right now, sign up, because we're gonna be going more in depth 
And watch out for more of these videos because we're peeling back the curtains even deeper and telling you more about how to start a successful business. I'm done. Bam.